Good morning, Ultimate Baby Sleep Group. I'm talking a little quietly. I'm, I'm feeling a little under the weather. I've got a super sore throat over here and not feeling so amazing. I have some kids home also. So I'm going to keep this brief today, a little bit shorter than normal. As you normally know, I can talk and talk and talk your ears off about baby sleep and about all your questions always, but I'm going to keep this one a little bit on the shorter end just because I'm not feeling 100%. In any case, we are here today to go through this week's Monday question thread. For those of you who are new to the group, just want to remind you how to utilize the group and what we do here. Number one is we have our Monday question threads. Every Monday, most Mondays, we post a certain topic with a theme. This week is how to help your child sleep, your baby sleep while you still have a toddler at home and like juggling the baby, the toddler. I see a lot of questions in here in the group about how to ensure you can actually get sleep when your toddler's home um, and how you can actually help your baby sleep because it's oftentimes a juggling act and how you can really do that well, number one. That's the first way we help you in the group. The second way is when you use hashtag sleep cue. I come in a few times a week and I do videos. We call them cues and coffee where I pick a few hashtag sleep cue questions at random <coughs> and I answer you. So sorry if I'm going to be coughing a little bit. Like I said, I've got a super wonky sore throat here. So this week's topic thread, as I said, was how to navigate and juggle helping your baby sleep when you have a toddler home with you or even how to get things in gear when you have a toddler home with you because I will tell you, having done this many times with my own, having been a full-time working mom, having been a full-time stay-at-home mom, both what I do now when I'm working all day and then with them when they come home, all different combinations, being a mom, we have kids is a full-time job in and of itself and whether you're trying to navigate your baby's sleep and your toddler's sleep or you're just trying to get sleep or get your toddler in a good rhythm things can get super complicated so I'm gonna delve through some of the questions here there were a few really awesome ones um, they were all awesome ones but some of them were a little off topic which is okay if you ever if I ever don't answer your question here when I'm going through the Monday question threads just use hashtag sleep cue and hopefully I will pick your question to answer when we do a video so before talking about that, and I'm going to reiterate some key points I talk about all the time. So for those of you who've heard me say it, hope it drives home more. If you're bored of hearing me say it, then just tune me out. But you cannot help a toddler sleep for sure. You cannot help a baby sleep unless you have that predictable routine set up. And what it's all about is that confidence to know what to expect. I find half the people who have issues with their toddler's sleep or issues, excuse me, with their baby's sleep while having a toddler home is lack of predictability, right? Their baby's not on a good schedule. The baby's overtired. The baby's this. The baby's hungry. The baby's that. And you're suddenly running around like a chicken without a head while you are trying to navigate your toddler. So suddenly your baby's screaming because your baby's overtired. Your baby's screaming because things are all out of whack. And suddenly your toddler needs something he has an accident, he spills something, it's all over the place, your baby's overtired, you're trying to like juggle and run around amok like a chicken without a head trying to deal with your toddler and your baby and your this and your that and it gets really overwhelming because you're one person and you can only split yourself so much. So the key to ensuring that you can do anything successful while having a toddler home and helping your baby sleep is just having a predictable schedule because technical successes come from having things set up well. Like in, me house, in my house, excuse me, we have the five P's, proper planning prevents promotes positive performance. I'm so not speaking well today. Sorry guys, I'm not feeling well. But it's no joke. Proper planning promotes positive performance. When you know what to expect, you know that your baby's going to be going down for a nap at a certain time. You know that this is about to happen, then you can predictably follow certain ideas, set your toddler up with a game, set your toddler up with some coloring, have your toddler read a book, whatever things you do, and then you can know, oh, listen, okay, my baby's going to be going to sleep in about 10, 15 minutes. Now I can devote this time to my baby. I've got my toddler all set up and you can kind of divide and conquer that way. Most people run into issues when things are unpredictable. Things are haphazard. Your baby's overtired, this is running around, the spaghetti just spilled all over the floor, and now the toddler's screaming, but you know your toddler was your baby was supposed to take a nap, but you weren't sure when because they, you're not sure when they woke up from their last nap, and things can get like super crazy and overwhelming. If you can just know when your baby needs to be sleeping, when your baby needs to be eating, what predictable nap schedules look like, then you can navigate through things beautifully while having another kid at home, having two kids at home, having three kids at home. It doesn't matter because everyone's kind of flowing with the predictable rhythm that you have set up. And it doesn't mean being a stickler. It doesn't mean having an exact play-by-play. -play. A routine is really liberating because it gives you the confidence to be able to meet your child's needs as they come, especially when you are juggling 
sleep with a few kids simultaneously. It can be super overwhelming. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that if you have that set up and you know what to expect, or at least you have some idea, some semblance of sequence, sequential events, or rhythms, this happens, then that happens, then it happens around this time, then you can predictably meet your child's needs without having to feel like you're constantly spitting yourself, your baby's overtired, your toddler's not getting your attention, because you have that set up, okay? That's a really important thing. So let me go through some of your questions here. Okay, Jessica asked, my son is two and he doesn't usually take naps anymore. Okay, so this is another question. What to do when you have a toddler that's transitioning into naps, out of naps, not needing to be nap anymore while navigating a baby? Okay, let's see what your question is. All right, your son is two and he doesn't usually take naps during the day anymore. He will go to sleep in his bed fine. For the last six months, he's waking up having night terrors and it takes a while to calm him down. How can you stop and prevent night terrors? Okay, that's one question. Number one, I will tell you, Jessica, we do have a video here in the group event. I think it's titled Nightmares versus Night Terrors. We talk a lot about how to navigate and help with night terrors because they are not a lost cause at all. It's just a matter of helping your child reset. So watch those videos. Okay, so you have a nine-month-old with your two-year-old and doesn't like sleeping. She fights naps all day long. Okay, so it sounds like there's a bunch of different issues going on. Number one, divide and conquer. I always tell parents... If you're juggling two kids that aren't sleeping well, okay, let's say you're not just focusing on your to your toddler's sleep or your baby's sleep. They both don't sleep and you're feeling overwhelmed and what can you do to prevent things and get things in a good place? Pick which child is the hardest for you at the moment. Pick which child is the one that you feel like is really fighting you, the one before you do bedtime, Jessica, that really like gets under your skin that you feel like, oh my gosh, that's what's going to be so rough on me tonight. Pick the one first that you feel like you need to battle because otherwise you're going to try to work on both of their sleep simultaneously spread yourself too thin and not be successful with either one so of the two jessica which one is the one you want to work on first is it your two-year-old is it your baby and i tell all of you that if you have a few kids unless you're working with multiples twins triplets i've actually helped with quadruplets before believe it or not um my best friend had quadruplets very crazy she had just for a crazy story just to tell you all my very 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 close friend been my good friend since we were like two years old she had quadruplet boys, all boys, okay? And when they were one and a half, she had another boy. And then when that one was one and a half, she had a girl, okay? So she, at a certain point, had six kids under three year, under four years old, excuse me, six kids under four years old. Can you imagine? Craziness, okay? But the good news is we got everyone sleeping, so it wasn't a total zoo. Um, she happens to just have a lot of kids also. Now she had another girl and another girl. She's like pregnant with her eighth now, I think. She's a pro at this, but in any case, it's easy because her kids sleep. Not easy. She can navigate through things a little bit more breezefully because her kids do sleep, all right? So when you're trying to navigate multiple children, different ages, different situations, just pick the one that you feel like you have to work on first because it's all about this predictability, okay? See, there's a lot of questions here about toddlers and difficulty with bedtime. I guess I wasn't clear with this question thread. This one was really about trying to balance getting good sleep routines while your toddler is at home. Okay, so we talked a lot, and I'll, I'll put a separate thread again about um, toddlers and bed fighting. We've done that before, but we'll do it again because I see it's a popular topic here. We already talked about what to do when you have a baby and a toddler and how to kind of navigate that. We already talked about what to do when you have two kids that aren't sleeping, which one you pick, how you figure out which one to work on. What do you do if you have a toddler home all day and they're just fighting you, right? Forget the fact that you have a baby. Forget the fact that there's someone else home. Um, forget that even you just have your baby and your toddler home with you. How do you figure out when your child's ideal sleep windows are, when to nap him, if not to nap him, how to kind of foster your way through all of that when you've got a toddler home and you're running errands and you're doing things and you're a stay-at-home mom and you're cooking and you're cleaning and you're busy and you're this and you're that. It's like very oftentimes very difficult to find the pockets of opportunity to help your child sleep. So it kind of falls back into the first thing I was talking about, about dividing and conquering. By the way, I just want to make sure, can everyone hear me right now? and see me. I know I'm like not so animated like I normally am because I'm not feeling 100%. But if you can hear me and see me okay, and then what I'm saying is making sense because my brain feels like a big jumbled disconnect cold like when your head is disconnected from your neck. Can you just give me some thumbs up, some hearts, say hi. I'm used to tons of comments. Okay, fine. I was a little, a little worried. I'm used to everyone saying hi, Batya. I was a little nervous. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Um, so in any case, okay, so that's the situation. So if you have a toddler, though, you can't find the pockets of win windows of opportunity of when is an ideal time. Thank you, Miranda. When are ideal opportunities to get that toddler to sleep? Then the best way you're going to be able to do that is by, thanks, Megan, is by figuring out that rhythm also, okay? I cannot drive this point home enough. 99.999999% of sleep issues are caused due to a child being overtired, and being overtired can stem from a few things. It can mean a child not getting enough sleep. 
It can mean sleep not being distributed evenly enough. It can be that they're getting enough sleep, but you're not offering it at the right times. It can be so many things. So with a toddler, I don't want to make anyone ever OCD or feel like you can never run errands and you can never leave your house and you can never go grocery shopping because the sleep routine has to be perfect. That's not life, right? We have things. But more often than not, the more consistency and predictability that you can offer to your toddler, the better they're going to sleep because they are going to be able to fall into predictable rhythms and they will be able to follow consistent cues to know when sleep is coming and know how sleep is supposed to be in general, right? So that's the most important thing. The other questions I see here are really about fighting bedtime and are more like sleep dependency types of issues. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch all of our videos here on bedtime battles. More about what to do when you're having power struggles with kids, how to figure out naps, okay? Oh, here's one from Melissa, let's see. We're having a hard time knowing when to put our 20 month, 24 month old to bed. She naps from 12 to one or 1.30 and by five she's showing signs of being tired. You're worried, okay. So we have to ask a few different questions here, Melissa, to see what's going on here. Instead of digging deep with that, post another hashtag sleep cue question with a little bit more details about her irritability. But it's the same thing of having this constant awareness of what your child's sleep needs are. And I'm a big fan of logging your baby's habits, whether we're talking about a baby, whether we're talking about a toddler, whether we're talking about a 10 year old. When you have that toddler home with you, sometimes you feel like they never sleep. Sometimes you feel like they're always overtired, they're always rubbing their eyes. But if you can keep track of their habits for a consistent few days, you'll see certain patterns fall into place that you didn't know were there. Oh wow, my toddler typically is having a total meltdown by this time, but I'm not even offering a, bed, a nap till two hours later. Or they're yawning and they're showing signs of irritability, but I read that they're not supposed to. Typically speaking, most toddlers who are napping once a day need to take that one nap about four to four and a half hours after they've woken up from the morning. I actually had a long talk with Aubrey about this yesterday, about you know, regulations with daycares. I don't know why they are such sticklers for offering naps at certain times because it's not always ideal for what kids need. In an ideal world, I would like to see when a child is between, you know, 19 months and 24, 25 months, still typically, typically take, or even longer, so really till two and a half, still taking that solid one nap a day. I really like to see that nap happening a solid four to four and a half hours after they've woken up. Hang on, my husband's bringing me some coffee. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I need that morning coffee. I didn't have it yet. What? Okay, thank you. Um, so that's the story, okay? So anyone who's watching, does anyone have any questions about, in general, how to navigate sleep when you've got your toddler home, when you've got your baby home, when they're home with you and it often is difficult? Like I said, a lot of these questions are about sleep dependencies and about how to navigate different ideas of how to combat those sleep dependencies or power struggles. I wanted to focus this topic thread really just more about how to balance and juggle that sleep so that you can gracefully navigate your way through those hurdles and challenges because it's not always smooth and when you're one person splitting yourself to many, it's not easy, but it's all just about having a set plan and a set opportunity to know when your child needs to be sleeping, when this one needs to be doing that, even if you have to write it down. Sometimes it feels silly, but if you can do that, then you have all the tools necessary to come armed and ready with ammunition to do this. The biggest reason people lose control with their sleep and have children that are overtired and feel overwhelmed is just because there's no structure, okay? So some people run away who are not structured people. I'm a very like, I like order, I like predictability, I like consistency. If you're a more go with the flow type of person, you're fine with things being all over the place, you like things being spontaneous, that's fine. You don't have to force yourself to be someone you're not. But if you're suffering and you're feeling overwhelmed, log your child's habits for a few days and see when they typically go to sleep, when they're typically overtired, what things typically look like and what how that normally plays out on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you have a few kids, do it for kid A, then kid B, then kid C, then kid D. Doesn't matter. And that way you can just figure out how that is. And I'm always doing this, okay, with my kids in bedtime. As they grow older, certain kids need less sleep, certain kids need more sleep. I'm always, I don't write it down now just because it's all in my head, but I'm always trying to kind of move things around so it can flow properly so a child never does get overtired and we can really combat things with a good way. Jessica, what can you do in the middle of the night when your six month old wakes up? Hang on. You don't want to wake them up. You don't want to wake up the toddler, so I pick up and see other suggestions. I'm using dependency to keep things quieter. So that's a really good question, Jessica. How you don't necessarily want to use this dependency, but you're doing it just so baby child A doesn't wake up child B. So I'm a big, big, big fan of enlisting white noise or noise machines. You don't have to go out and buy this expensive $500 white noise machine. Seriously, go to the hardware store, buy one of those box fans, those square fans, 
and put one in kid A's room, put one in the hallway, put one in kid B's room, just to kind of drown out each other's noises. I will tell you, children are a lot more adaptable than we give them credit for, Jessica. So if your child, of course, you know, if child, let's say child A is the one who's wake, let's say your baby, okay, your six month old is the one who wakes up all night long, and toddler's a very sensitive sleeper. But if you're constantly running every time six month old makes a noise, toddlers never gonna have the opportunity to learn to sleep through other noises. I read a lot of studies about this all the time. I'm a big nerd. And I'll just tell you at the end of the day, children will learn to sleep through noises if we give them the opportunity to do so. You have that. You have white noise. Okay, so then you're gonna need to try to figure out a game plan. Maybe you can rearrange your toddler and your baby temporarily just to work on your baby's sleep because you don't wanna to continue to have your six month old waking up all night just for the sake of your toddler sleeping well because guess what, you're still not sleeping, Jessica, right? So what can you do? Can you bring your toddler into your room? Is it at the other end of the hall? Can you rearrange to have someone sleep in a guest room? Like just as a temporary solution to reconfigure everything so that way the goal is to hone in and have the opportunity and the environment to be able to fix your six month old sleep right? And then once your six month old is sleeping, then you can redistribute everyone to their normal sleeping spaces. I do this when I work with families. Sometimes people live in small apartments with a few kids and they don't have room. You can get creative. Try to figure out what you can do because staying where it is at status quo is not going to help. As your six month old gets older, nine months, 12 months, a year and a half, the sleep dependency is not going to magically disappear. It's just going to intensify as your baby gets older, stronger, and smarter. So you want to try to figure out what you can do now to hone in on your baby's sleep, without having everyone else's sleep suffer and giving your toddler opportunity to learn to sleep through your baby's noises too. Let me know if that makes sense. Give me a yes or okay, I'm gonna to try to brainstorm. You can send me a private message if you want, Jessica. We can think about some things together. All right, Caitlin. Here, I'll see your question here. How do you help your little one get on a more predictable routine? My daughter will be on a similar schedule for about five days and then it goes whack. I try to watch her cues and keep her routine within a 30 minute window. How old is your daughter, Caitlin? Remind me. Pleasure, Jessica. I know we've talked, Caitlin, but I, I will tell you one thing I can never know is how old anyone's kids are. My friends, their babies, like, I just never know because I'm up to my ears and other people's babies all day long. <laughs> tell me, remind me, um, Caitlin, how old your baby is. And I know you all make fun of my big cup of coffee, but I need it. I only drink one anyway. Okay, okay 11 months old. All right, so 11 month old and you feel like the routine is drastically varying day to day. You may or may not have a toddler home with you, but gosh, it's frustrating. So probably if things are varying so differently on a day-to-day -day basis, Caitlin, probably that's a telltale sign that the routine isn't ideal. Because if you've been trying it for a few weeks, which I know you have, because we've been in touch and I've seen your posts in the group, then likelihood is it's not the ideal routine for your baby because if your baby's gonna fall into a routine of what her body naturally wants to do, then things aren't going to be so haphazard on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would say to maybe rearrange things a little bit, maybe bump things up a little longer, maybe help extend naps a little later, maybe try to bump bedtime. Something is off because if it's a yo-yoing five days on, five days off, five days on, five days off, then something, there's some disconnect there that's not really working. Okay, let's answer one more question and then I gotta head out. My head is throbbing, even though I took Tylenol. What can you do? Head colds are brutal. Okay, Allison. My almost two-year-old who's been going to bed on her own six, six, not six months suddenly wants to be rocked and have her pat her back before she goes to sleep. Never wanted those things before. We've been trying to stay in her bed. She goes to sleep. Seems to be a new separation anxiety. So watch our video, Allison, on bedtime battles. What sounds to be happening here is a power struggle. And we talk about that a lot. We've got videos on toddlers and bedtime battles. I'm going to do another one because I see there's tons of questions on that. But first, make sure you're offering bedtime at the right time coupled with naps or no naps or wake times and meals digestion has plays a critical role in how kids sleep also and watch our videos on bedtime battles i think i think i think you're gonna have to check it out i'm not sure i think we have a video on toddlers and power struggles if we don't then guess what we're gonna do one but i'm gonna do one again anyway and try to watch that because what you want to do is there's clearly i wouldn't call it separation anxiety for a two-year-old as much as it is a power struggle and remember as i always tell you all how many people does it take to have a power struggle two your two-year-old pulls and you pull, and your two-year-old pulls and you pull. And you don't wanna pull harder or pull stronger, right? We fight fire with water, not fire with fire. I have a client I was just talking to about this, a family, a mother I'm working with, but the three-year-old who are having constant power struggles and battles every night. And we talked about with these, with these um, anti-authoritative kids, and yes, you can have an anti-authoritative two-year-old, the harder you fight back, the more they fight. And I don't mean fighting tooth and nail with holding them down and physical, I just mean your emotional level of letting them get that rise out of you. So the more calm you can feel in the process and the more confident you can feel despite what you're doing is going to be a solid environmental baseline. And I say environmental because it is. It's not just this like woo-woo stuff up in the air. It's real. 
your child picks up on your emotions and it's hard for your child to fall asleep when the tension or the stress or the anxiety in the room is so high. I'm not saying you're tense, Allison, but the more confident you can feel, the more firm you can feel. Like I'm sure there's certain things in your house that are unwavering that we never do, right? Or certain things that are non-negotiable. I don't have them in my house. They're like unspoken rules that I'm so, like it's a part of my essence that is like what we do and don't do. We never have a power struggle about it. Why? Because I have such an internal, like rock solid confidence. This is what we do. This is what we don't do. So obviously I'm not telling you that you have to, bedtime has to be this like, we go to bed, da -da, this dictatorship. Of course not. But the more confident you feel about anything that you're doing, any idea you enlist, any method you use to try to get rid of that dependency or get rid of that padding, again, watch our bedtime battles video, the more confident your toddler is going to feel and the more they're going to mirror that confidence back to you okay I see there's a lot more questions here um I am going to have to head out I'm sorry everybody I have a call actually with some of the people I'm working with in my rested moms club which we don't have any openings up now I'm sorry we have a few slots open next week if you want to set up a call with me but past that that's it we have like one or two spots available now in rested moms club it's pretty closed up because um, we're opening up a few things soon which i will tell you about in a few more weeks we're going to be having some exciting announcements happening more ways i can help you if you really just wanted some tips but gosh you didn't want to join my high-end one-on-one program or you were just interested in hearing more so just stay tuned we're going to be letting you know all about that i'm sorry for everyone else glad to help allison i'm sorry for everyone else's questions i couldn't answer always use hashtag sleep cue um, you can try to tag me to grab my attention also, and I'll do my best to come in and answer you. And like I said, the, all these questions about power struggles and bedtime, I see there's a lot of questions about that in our two posts here. So I will come in uh, hopefully next week or the week after and do a question thread on that. Have an amazing Thursday. Have an amazing weekend, and I will see you all. Take care.